People keep asking me if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But no, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Whoa. One of my favorite lines from John Wick. John Wick Chapter 2. I saw the first John Wick of a few years ago. I was just in the mood for some pure adrenaline action. And my god did it deliver. Some of the best <laughs> fist fighting I've ever seen, especially in recent cinema. And this whole gun fu craze is amazing in John Wick. Just the whole bang bang, bang 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 bang. Who doesn't want to be John Wick? Keanu Reeves, he's back again. Directed by Chad Stahelski, this really talented director who has an incredibly talented background in stunt work. Yeah, he worked on the first John Wick as well. One of my main complaints about a lot of action films when I go to the cinemas or see them on Blu-ray for the first time is that they try to open the film up with a big huge set piece that goes on forever and half the time it doesn't work for me. I always usually feel like I need a proper character moment like to get me into the world and stuff. I don't feel immersed enough, but that's not the case with John Wick Chapter 2. I don't know if they just had the volume a bit too high, but when that car chase right at the beginning started, that was deafening, almost deafening, but it was brilliant. It totally sucks me into it. It kicks off the very first shot. Is like a, it's like a sweeping shot of the cityscape. There's like this really cool like score going on over the top. And then it cuts to like the ch chase. It's, oh. I don't know why, but it really got me into it. John Wick does so well at stuff like that. It doesn't seem to go for the more Hollywood eyes sort of set pieces in that sense. It gets John Wick to think a bit more about how to like defeat the bad guys and it really plays out well, I think. Like you notice that a lot throughout the film, there's a lot of intelligent fight scenes. It's all a bit grounded and more realistic. Like for example, John Wick doesn't, isn't seen like driving and then going with his gun. Just with the first one, there is absolutely no hold back on the violence. There is blood and stabbing everywhere and i mean they show it it's it's oh it's just oh. there's the stuff with like a knife or a pen or something and it's just like <laughs> and you see it all like going in and out and it oh it's just what you want to see in a film like this it makes you realize how tired you are of typical films like cutting away from this like for example we'll go, pretend this is a knife like they'll be like <laughs> and then they'll cut to a shot where the other guy's like <laughs> Whereas in John Wick, it's more like he'll have like an extreme wine and it'll be probably like. I get a pen on me. Yeah, John Wick is definitely one of the best action heroes of today. To me, he's one of the more relatable. He's quite an emotional guy at, at most parts. Like when he's at his home, for example. Like, especially with the first film, how he lost his wife and then they killed his dog. You're really getting behind that motivation in the first film and a lot of it carries on to the second one to the point where you're like i know this character i mean the motivation for the second one as a lot of people have said isn't as great like there's no i killed your dog you bbh's <laughs> and the opening sequence is a bit similar to that but then the rest of the plot does kind of loop itself around in the story and stuff but and being kind of reused he's not really considered one of the better actors of today but he totally works as John Wick because John Wick the series of John Wick is very much a throwback to like 80s and 90s action films I think in my opinion the violence is grounded and realistic for sure like it's all done practically and for real and in camera it's all in camera stunts but at the same time it kind of feels like the proper brutal 80s films you know like Robocop and stuff where they're just like <laughs> feels like one of them brought into this modern age of dark and realistic like films it feels like that but we also get the the corny dialogue like there's a lot of what did you say well not exactly that but it's just kind of like that sort of thing but one of the biggest things is that the bad guys will very often be like blah 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 while talking to john wick blah 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 blah, blah. <gasps> and then they'll have a massive pause and they'll go mr wick and then he'll be like walking away, Mr. Wick. And he'll be like. That happens quite a lot in this film. But you buy it because it's kind of, it's got that cheesy charm to it where you're like, yeah. 
he's cool for the sake of being cool and this film is cool for the sake of being cool it's just, it all works very well like for example uh, i don't know his name but the guy who john wick goes to quite a lot at the hotel you know like in the first one it's that guy and he's just stood at the reception desk and in this one he's like didn't expect to see you back so soon mr wick something like that like it's very like in your face dialogue almost like i see what you're doing there you kind of saying what we're thinking it's kind of cool like the way they do it i mean it's like the acting isn't exactly great even from keanu reeves but it works like there's a ton of hilarious moments in this film as well like just through the violence like for example there's a proper big tough buff guy and you would be like no way could john wick be that guy no way in real life would john wick be able to be that guy and like i said what he does to get around that is just hilarious also you know you remember quantum of solace don't you the disappointing sequel to casino royale and uh, there's mr white you'll you've seen it in the trailer if you haven't seen it and he's like we have people everywhere and he's talking about these like bad guys oh this is gonna be intense it doesn't really build on that like i was expecting bond to be like going into cities and being like oh my god any one of these could be oh no <laughs> okay maybe that's more like john wick and that's what i mean this film really does have people everywhere looking for john wick however the film isn't constantly at that high adrenaline fueled action vibe that it has for the most part sometime sometime after the opening sequence it does slow down it gets a bit more into the story and the characters before it really really kicks off the rest of the film totally makes up for it villain wise though we don't particularly have any great villains i didn't like the main villain i hated him i mean it's good that i hated him but at the same time i didn't think he was a good villain a lot of the villains are just there for john wick to probably like <laughs> And I love that the movie is just an excuse for John Wick to do super cool stuff. But there's stuff like there's a female villain played by that Ruby Rose that everyone goes on about every so often. Not fun to watch, just an awful character. She's one of those cliched, you know, henchmen to a bad guy where they have like a quirk, sort of like a like a memorable quirk. Because she's deaf, so she has to like sign language. She has to use sign language to communicate with everybody. Again, it kind of fits in with the over-the-top cheesiness of the film. They don't really give her much of a character. Like, I don't really know anything about her apart from the fact that she is deaf, has to use sign language, and has a knife. She's just built up and up and up for nothing. Yeah, the bad guys just basically just stand about and say ex expository dialogue and pronounce John Wick's name in a really, like, John Wick. Or, like, dark and gruesome way. Which is, again, kind of works, but at the same time you kind of expect a bit more because the film itself is amazing in terms of, like, action. You can let it slide, but at the same time you want it to just elevate itself that bit more, just with a bit more work on the other characters. John Wick's great, he's, he's solid, but we need a bit more work on, like, the villains, I think. I mean, the best villain in the film was the Cassian character, played by Common. He's kind of an exact equal to John Wick, the same sort of skill set, he's from the same sort of like society, but like he has his own job to be doing, and John Wick kind of gets in the way of that. It really works, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on there, there's a lot of humour between the two that you get, because it kind of works in the John Wick universe. But he's definitely the coolest villain, because you kind of buy his motive, he kind of has a bit of character, and you, you understand why he has to fight John Wick. It leads to some pretty awesome action set pieces. A lot of the action scenes, even from the very beginning, I was just sat there like... Like, you can't help it, you really get into it, you start smiling because you're like, this is brilliant! And again, with the action, I don't know if any of you guys get this, but sometimes when I watch a really, really, really cool and immersive fight scene in a really cool action film, and there'll be proper, like, fist fighting, and it'll be proper all well filmed and choreographed, you get really immersed to the point where you sat there, and your arm starts twitching as they like punch off oh, like somebody gets knocked to the ground or your leg starts twitching does that happen that happens to me like i'll be watching something and i'll be so immersed i'll be like 
I do have a couple problems. Again, the weak villains, but we all know that this is a very practical film. But there's like odd scenes, like really oddly chosen scenes as well, where they'll use CGI. Like there's a simple shot where there's like buildings, like you know, like a city ground level camera, like just filming through another path, and people are just casually walking across the screen. But there's a road in the middle, and the buildings part, so like the buildings are all here and the part in the middle and there's the sky there and John Wick like for example walked from here I think it was and he was walking as he walked in between the buildings he got thinner smaller and obviously rotoscoped or something because they added in a CGI sunny background I think they did anyway because it looked so fake and it really took me out of it but it was just like five second random establishing shot scene and it was just odd to see CGI used especially that bad it does have one of those endings though where you'll be like wait is this ending are we in the last couple of minutes no 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 don't end please don't end don't don't end and it doesn't but they have tons of dialogue that builds up to an ending with the music like kind of like gradually building and you're like no please don't end and they have a lot of extreme wides constantly and you're like please don't end here this is too good don't 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 and then it ends and you're like ah but at the same time you kind of think i probably just enjoyed it a bit too much i wanted too much more from it but yeah, if you if you guys want to see some really super cool action and potentially the best action you'll see all of this for the rest of this year, like, I mean, it's only February and I think we've already got the best action film. So that's pretty impressive. Whereas other films might have great dialogue and great acting, they might lack in the action department, but you might still think it's a great film. This kind of does it the other way around, where it has fantastic action, like 10 out of 10 great action. Bit wavy on the dialogue, but you you accept it because it it feels like it's part of the universe of this film and it, it works. And the acting goes alongside that. Anyway, my overall rating for John Wick Chapter Two is 8.5 out of 10. I think I might prefer it to the first one. I felt that the first one kind of dragged a bit towards the end. I wish it kind of ended a bit before it did. Still a great action film. I think this one holds up completely well as a sequel and kind of just offers everything that the first one did, but adds a bit more to it, I think, in my opinion. I think you should definitely check it out when it's finally... I don't know if it's officially released in the UK just yet. I think it comes out in Friday in most cinemas, but definitely go and check it out. Uh, I've got some other reviews on my channel, did the Lego Batman movie here from the other week, uh, Split as well, um, yeah, like and subscribe and maybe I'll see you some other time, bye. Did you lot in the UK know that this film has been cut down for UK audiences? A bit more edited down in the violence or something? I think it was to warrant the 15 rating. And for the most part I didn't really notice anything, but there was one kind of controversial sort of like disturbing scene in the film near a jacuzzi sort of thing. But they kind of cut away from something that happens and it's all done through sound effects and it's really over the top like sound effects that just didn't really sound genuine and realistic and kind of sounded a bit cringy and it kind of pulled me out and uh, and then it reminded me oh my god is this this film was re-edited wasn't it for uk audiences i don't know if that is one of those scenes but i would like to see the uncut version in the uk hopefully on blu-ray we get that again just a little small thing not really a problem just something to let you know